Hello everyone and welcome. It's been a while, <laughs> though not as long as usual, but uh, I'm back and this time I'm going to finish completely the town models that I have. This is an appropriate level that I am happy with. I do believe they are tabletop ready, so I will go ahead and put the decals on all of the miniatures now and uh, that's about it for the oh no there's one more thing that I will also be varnishing them uh, making them a little more resistant to touch so not little quite a lot actually but yes uh, that is the plan for today and with that uh, the models will be complete and there will just be one final video uh, in this uh, Tau series and that will be making a display case for them because I want to be able to um, show them to their full glory as my first complete uh, force let's go with that they cannot truly be called an army because they're like uh, 300 points worth but yeah uh, placing decals is very simple and I'm choosing not because of the uh, not because I don't have them. I This is a choice. Of course, I don't have them because they're not really expensive, but there's something that is not really needed in the sense that I don't have micro soul and micro set. I know I've babbled quite a lot without anything, with, without saying anything. Good. What I'm trying to say is that placing decals can be done with water just as easily as with micro sole and micro set which is something that i saw uh most uh, other you hobby youtubers doing but this is just a, from my point of view an extra expense i have yet to actually test those uh, uh, uh products I intend to get them at some point in time, but for the moment, especially since this is like my first project, I intend to um, keep uh, keep it as uh, as light as possible and as easy as I can. So, uh, you take the decals, you cut them out of the sheet they're in, and you just place them in water. Then uh, you just uh, slide them off the paper and put them in the position you want and then just use a bit of varnish now I use a uh, glossy varnish for this part it's a bit stickier <laughs> so to speak than uh, the matte varnish so that is the point and uh, I just dab it a little bit on the decal itself and place it on uh, the uh, miniature in question now you'll see me First, I will cover all of the drones, and I will. Well, I have uh, around two of the same types of drones, more or less. I'm just going to uh, uh, show you how I did each and every decal rather than uh, duplicate, especially for like the Tau um, Pathfinders, because those are 10 of them and they're identical and it would have been pointless. And then this video would indeed have been another two hour long video and I don't want to do that again. Um, problems with this varnish though, I don't know whether it's uh, rather old or the fact that it's not diluted in any way because I want to be as sticky as possible. But yes indeed, while applying it with a brush, sometimes it sticks so much that it can actually take off the decal while uh, placing it but overall I think I did a decent job I tried to put some varnish underneath as well as well as on top to make like a seal and then use a bit of a, a cotton swab to uh, take out the moisture and the water and the varnish uh, and just leave it as uh, little as possible just to make that seal and to uh, glue it there in place then later on in the video once all the decals have been applied i will take out my airbrush and i will matte varnish this is much this is very important because i did the mistake of gloss varnishing some uh miniatures 
from the Firefly uh, box. This was a long. This was before I started filming the process, and they are incredibly glossy. I think I only did it on one though. Yeah, I only did it on one. I was just testing it out, and it really looks unnatural. And I will probably just uh, spray it with again with matte varnish to make it look uh, quite okay. Hopefully that will fix the problem. But getting back to the topic at hand, um, hey, I bumped into the camera again. I didn't even catch that on the edit. Uh, moving on, uh, I also added a small decal on the teleporting home or the uh, drop home. I, I honestly don't know how these guys do it. Do they orbital drop to the location? I should look into that. So the, the stealth suits are basically like the terminators for the Tau uh, in the sense that um, they uh, can, they can deep strike and that's their teleporter home, uh, homing beacon. You can place it on the map anywhere and so on and so on. Uh, right. Um, So I also added a small decal on that, and as you can see, see, I, I either used too much or uh, it's been too long and it started to dry on the brush. Uh, now both of the varnishes that I have are water soluble, but they're real, real uh, uh, hard to clean up off the brushes. I actually left the brushes after using... Um, uh, using the varnish into a solution of water and uh, cleaning fluid, uh, dishwasher, soap. Hopefully uh, they will be fully cleaned in a matter of a few days. Uh, and I, I, won't ha I won't have to destroy brushes, but if I do, I have plenty of brushes and I can just um, uh, use these for varnishes going forward. Uh, for the Pathfinder uh, support drone, assault drone, I, I, it's called a Pathfinder drone, but uh, you know the one with the minigun basically. <laughs> I just added a small decal on the central hub, uh, on the central, I don't know, hub, uh, the central uh, socket where the uh, main lenses are. And it looked good enough and I just left it at that. I, I could have looked for something more. But uh, I liked it, and that's fine. And I especially like the contrast that the red markings do on the green. Uh, I know uh, for color uh, blind users are color, color deficient because it's my is not the best contrast <laughs> or the best idea. But I like it, and it's fine for me. Speaking of, uh, I think I realized what my difficulty in painting uh, gradients and highlights uh, have always been uh, on these miniatures. Now I don't have color blindness, no, but what I do have, and this might be to my poor bad side, is a deficiency in seeing the difference in hues. So incredible light differences in hues are very difficult for me to see while exaggerated ones like when the uh, miniature is painted I can clearly see especially for uh, like uh, golden demon winners and so on and so forth I can't see those but those are designed to be like that and they're really really good jobs but whenever I use two colors that are supposed to be like the highlight for it and they're both wet on the miniatures or uh, either the base color is wet and I apply the highlight I don't see it, so I don't honestly know when to stop applying it, so, so it's more of like a guessing game for me. But I will try to look further into doing that by just guessworking and trying to see if I can train my eyes, so to speak, on um, uh, distinguishing these difference in hues for, you know, like the mid-tones. Because right now I get, am really having trouble seeing the difference between when I do them between mid tone between like the base color and the shadows one and then the mid tones and then the highlights 
while I'm painting them. When they're dry, I tried and I noticed a bit of a change on like um, Dark uh, Dark Strider's head because that is the most recent one that I applied uh, this technique. But usually I don't really see it. Now you're thinking, but hey, why are you doing all of those drones and how are you doing them? Because you seem to have uh, or both... Uh, actually, you can't see it in this video. What did you do with all the drones? Because you have like uh, five drones over there, but too many attachments in the sense that uh, I have both a gravity thingy, uh, shield ones, rocket launchers, and um, um, uh, gun ones, as well as marker light drones. Right, I combined my drones on the same stock because I wanted them to be like uh, switchable. I don't, ha I haven't magnetized them because I couldn't find in my hardware store uh, one millimeter magnets or small magnets. I really have only big ones. I might order some and magnetize them late, but uh, the main drones that I plan on using during my games, especially for like, you know, unofficial ones, are going to be shielded missile drones for the XZ88, which is something that I think only, um, only like major commanders have that not... Uh, not the uh, standard XV8, but I want to give it a tiny boost because I have very, very few points in, uh, and I want them to be a bit more punchy than uh, their points. And uh, the other ones, I sort of combined gun drones with uh, the shield generator or the, uh, the gravity thingy that stops charges and something else I don't really remember or I, I haven't played a single game with them yet uh i only played tyranids versus space marines and uh going forward i do plan on since they're painted the next game will probably be a really really small force of just uh tau versus tyranids or something like that i can't wait to test that out for the xv25 step suits i added a decal on like their face which looked awesome with curved flawlessly i had some problems that i noticed on uh uh exactly on these parts i think once the uh varnish was dry i don't know if they'll show up in the final shots because i haven't done them yet i'm gonna try and do them but um it's too late for me to change them and i don't want to ruin the paint job and it's a good thing for me it's a good stepping stone for me to learn uh how to do it better next time and see whether or not uh, the said micro sole and micro set are better than just water for this. Because um, it seemed that um, even though they seemed flush with uh, the paint job and the plastic, it, it kind of seemed that it moved a little bit and either uh, it warped after being varnished or uh it got underneath somehow and it stayed white i don't know it just gives an awe uh, a different effect than what i was expecting with some white points here and there and that might be uh, a mistake on my part either in uh, putting them there or in something else but this only happens on like uh the decals that are on uh curved uh, parts so like the heads of the drones and the curved parts of the Tau helmets or the XV-25s alright so um, this has been quite a fun little experiment I haven't put decals on miniatures on our models for uh, wow a lot it's been like 25 years and uh, honestly I didn't have any experience um, putting them on paint because uh, I 
did back then when I was a teenager and did some uh, uh, model work. I had the uh, F-16s and uh, some tanks, uh, a lot of helicopters and so on and so forth. But I didn't have paint. They were rather difficult to find for me. Uh, uh, and uh, I just assembled them and uh, glued down the decals uh, directly on the plastic. It, it was. It seemed to me to be a lot more smoother uh, because you know paint still has a texture, uh, regardless of how fine it is. But uh, yeah, I also didn't really use like um, uh, varnish or anything like that because that's against something that I couldn't have, and they were just there with water. Uh, in theory, they held out quite well. Oh, let well see in time how these hold up. One thing I wanted to mention, because uh, this is something that I recently thought of. I was going to say, oh, uh, in a few years, I'll just repaint these. And that's how I usually start. But it, I instead, I thought about it more and I was like, no, actually, I think I will never go back and repaint anything. I want to see my progression as a painter. I want to see how my uh, miniatures are going to look in like 10, 20 or whatever years. So I want to keep this army as is. While I'm probably going to keep the uh, paint scheme because I really, really like it, I will just upgrade it. And each and every uh, new unit that I'm going to get is just going to be a bit better, hopefully, and I can see like a progress in time. Uh, speaking of new models, you know how I said I am definitely not going to have like a pile of shame. Right. So, well, I just finished these guys and um, I said I would start with either the Tyranids or the Space Marines or maybe finish Gaunt's Ghosts and so on and so forth. Yeah, about that. There was... Uh, a period at work where I got some a bonus and um, since I had so, a little bit of extra cash and well, the shop that had the best offer had only one in stock I kind of ordered the combat patrol box for Tau so yes there's going to be more town going forward but definitely not videotaped or uh, filmed because um, you know what um, I really need to get working on the older uh, models but and this is a but definitely uh, I want to uh, get them assembled and uh, ready for, and primed oh man I don't want to prime them because I would have to assemble them fully and I, I'm gonna have to do some assemblies to paint them because I learned my lesson so um, yeah no 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 I'm definitely not going to do it I'm going to do it in sub assemblies because there will be some big models including a uh, ghost kill and a lot of fire warriors <laughs> and I learned my lesson from uh, painting the pathfinders you want to keep their arms off uh, before uh, painting them so that it's easier for you to uh, paint everywhere and you can add the uh, the arms afterwards after paint right so yes that's definitely the plan I keep making plans I'm probably not gonna <laughs> I'm probably not going to <laughs> then again if I do it I kind of don't want to magnetize them Oh my god, that would be so awesome. What if I magnetize them to make them both breachers and uh, fire warriors? Hmm. So many ideas. I, I need to find a place where I can get one millimeter magnets. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, that's another plan. That's another project to go by. Just making like oh wow that 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 sounds like an awesome idea. That sounds like an awesome idea. And with like 
if I magnetize them, maybe I can easily paint them and come up with like painting handle that can hold magnetized parts. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I I'm gonna try and see if I can make that like a thing to make it so much easier to paint. I mean, that sounds like a great idea. I wonder if anybody has thought about it before. I'm hoping I can actually do that. And it's in such a way that it can be viable. I'm gonna try and see how that works. I'm gonna find a place and order some one millimeter magnets. I wonder if they have it at the hobby shop over there. I'll have to check. All right, uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, all of the stickers on, I didn't comment that much on the sticker and because it's pretty simple. You just take uh, the thing, put it in water. Uh, once it uh, detaches, you can help that with the detachment and place uh, it place it on the miniature, just add a bit of varnish and that's it. It's not things, you just uh, have to pick and choose where to put them. Now, one thing that I uh, noticed that I would have honestly expected them to have something like this, but again, I guess Games Workshop didn't really think about it, uh, or it, they thought it would be rather difficult. And this is especially true for like uh, military vehicles because now that I think about it, it is pretty uh, odd. Um, they only have like the markings for the units and so on and so forth. But when you look at our military vehicles, um, they have all sorts of decals like where to open like a security hatch or uh, an emergency hatch and so on and so forth or what is dangerous where to do, uh, use it and so on and so forth where to open it in case of a crash and so on and so forth i don't see any decals like that that would have been awesome to have uh on like these tau with of course like you know different languages and so on and so forth or different markings it doesn't have to be something that uh, makes sense to us you know like uh um as uh humans but the same can be true for like uh space marine armor or or maybe not space marine armor but for like vehicles how do you open the door when it's upside down and so on and so forth with like an arrow like our tanks and planes have now okay here's an idea for games workshop if they ever see this video yeah that would be awesome I might also think about getting some decals from like military kits and adding those. See how they look. Of course, they might they might not be to scale or anything. Uh, so many problems. All right, uh, back to what I'm doing. I'm literally varnishing absolutely everything. While wow. I cut a lot on the editing floor, uh, because. Uh, it's really relatively easy you just put it under a spray and you just twist uh, the model around each and every side make sure that the varnish gets everywhere that's how i did it and it's pretty easy not uh, that hard where i uh, sprayed it too thick in like one area i just um, brought my airbrush really really close with just um air blast and that seemed to do the trick it uh, pushed it everywhere and that was that uh in case you're wondering and saying oh you have an airbrush uh you're already a professional and, oh good god no but that's the thing that's the thing a lot of these guys say oh i'm not using an airbrush airbrush I mean, okay this is not the professional airbrush by any means this is like the cheapest airbrush you can buy and the compressor itself is a mini compressor. It works more along the lines of a hair dryer. It just focuses everything to like a very, very uh, small diameter hole. That's what it does. It's, it doesn't have a tank. It uh, doesn't have any sensors. It doesn't have any pressure settings. 
but it's enough for a beginner and you can get really really good effects for your uh basing and that's how i did to use it going forward just be able to uh base all of my uh miniatures quite easily and that is very important uh it will take out and it will give you a much smoother finish I highly recommend it. it my it, my life has all been much easier using this. For the big guy, I used um, a bit uh, of gloss varnish on his uh, power pack, on his reactor, and on all of the lenses. The same is true for all of the lenses and uh, the. Uh, dots and buttons on all of the weapons for the top pathfinders and the drones here you can see me adding a bit of gloss varnish on dark striders um, monocle on his uh information display as well as all of the like i mentioned all of the tau uh lenses on his helmet um, and weapons and stuff uh, the, the same was true for the plasma gl glow on the xv8 uh stealth suit chasse chasse one of those uh basically the officers i can't honestly uh, remember all of the names because again i haven't had the chance to actually play with them maybe i will remember it once i actually play with them this should give like a brighter gloss much glossier finish uh, to those specific parts and with the xv8 comes the end of this uh, video i will let you enjoy my final shots and hopefully i will have a surprise for you uh within the final shots so stick around and if you enjoyed the show please like subscribe and share it to the friend bye bye i'll see you in the next one